Hi. Uh, my name is Ethan Bowen, and I'm standing in for Dan McKinley as moderator moderator tonight. Um, and I know that Dan usually starts this meeting with a little explanation of basic explanation of uh, Robert's Rules of or Order. Um, we will go through the warning, and I just want to make sure everybody has this amended warning. We'll actually work off the real warning. This amended warning has some changed numbers uh, for Article 5, which we'll point out when we get to it. Um, it's uh, it a, uh, just one quick little area that will be explained by the select board. So anyway, we'll go through um, article by article. Um, and uh, uh, the basic thing is I'll, I'll, I'll ask you to move, I'll read the article out, I'll ask you to move the article, which means to bring it to the table, literally in front of us to work on, and then it'll need a second. And, um, and I, I'll sometimes, Mark, who's taking notes here? Excellent, Julie. Um, if she can't see who the second is, I may call out uh, just a name. I don't, I know you all by face. I may not have a, I have a 61 year old brain, may not, name may not come quickly. Um, so once it's on the table, um, then we can discuss it. It's been moved. Then we can discuss it. If there are any questions about any article, and the the purpose of the moderator is to make sure that everybody is heard, and that all questions are answered, and that we move also in a in a uh, reasonable time. But um, if you have a comment on some issue, um, we like to limit your comments once until everyone's gotten around, and no more. I think. What do you do with the select board? We do five minutes. Do you do two minutes? Do you care? Five minutes. So if you have a comment, um, um, and then it, it's, at some point when it's clear that questions, or if there are no questions, or if questions have all been asked, um, then we will uh, put the motion up for a vote. Um, almost all the articles can be voted on by an aye or nay, vocal. Um, the first three articles under Article 2 need to be by ballot. And uh, I can explain that a little more when we get there, um, that we'll, uh, we have to. we'll need to either submit a ballot, or if, if there's only one care, uh, uh, candidate, That's then it makes it quite easy. If there's not, we'll, we'll definitely have to um, do a paper ballot uh, for each, each of those three. It's uh, select board, town clerk, and town treasurer. Other than that, um, uh, I, uh, I'm used to the rules of order of the school board, which is a little looser. So if I do forget somebody, and somebody's much smarter than me, which is quite possible, um, about Roberts, uh, I just ask that you raise your hand and say, point of order, uh, moderator. And, um, and just sort of explain what your point is. And I've probably, I've noticed that Judy is well, Julie has well prepared me. I'm not sure I have time to read all this before I got up here, but uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. She wants me to succeed tonight. Um, the first order of business, actually, technically, um, I shouldn't even be talking yet because um, I, uh, I need to be elected. Usually it's by the chairman of the select board. So if you'd like to take over for Article 1, and then we can, I, oh, I should read the warning first, sorry. Yeah. Town of Rochester, Vermont, annual town meeting to be held in person. Woo! <laughs> Monday night, March 28th, 2022, 7 p.m., the Rochester School Auditorium. The legal voters of the town of Rochester, County of Windsor, State of Vermont, are hereby notified and warned to meet in the Rochester School Auditorium, 222 South Main Street, in said town on Monday, March 28th, 2022, at 7 p.m. to transact the following business. Article 1. All right, we're, Article 1 is to elect a moderator for the coming year, and I would nominate Dan McKinley, if I understand he's willing to take that. This is for the coming year, not for this meeting. First, we'll vote it for the coming year, and then we're going to have a temporary moderator for tonight, which is even because Dan could not make it. So, entertainment. Somebody moved? I seconded. Dan McKinley was moved by Burma, seconded by? Barbara. Mark, Bar 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 Oh, Bar yep, you saw it. And you, all the vote? That sounds like right. All in favor? All in favor. Dan. Signified, oh no, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Now the ayes have it. The ayes have it, so um, 
Thank you, Dan, even though you're not here, and Ethan. Uh, we're, um, do you have to vote me in? I don't no. think we're I think you can just appoint, appoint you in yeah. tonight as our. You're doing a good job so far, so keep it up. <laughs> good. good. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Just. All right, great. Well, then let's get on to Article 2 to elect all town officers. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> As required by law, number one, to elect a select board member a three-year term. And uh, I will open nominations for a select board member. Uh, Martha. Um, I'd like to nominate June Hendricks. June Hendricks has been nominated. Do I have a second? Okay. Catherine Shakeman seconded. Any other nominations? There being none. I'll put it to a voice, a voice vote. Um, well, I guess no. We have to move that nominations be closed to be improper. Okay. Uh, so moved. Seconded. Second. I'll take uh, Lori Ford just because get around the close. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And now, Dune Hendricks for select board for a three year term. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Point of order? Point of order. Don't you have to have a ballot? Yes, I can now, once the voice votes happen, I can instruct the town clerk to submit a one ballot in the name of, and I think that's the right order. Yeah. If you think it's different, that's fine. But I think that's how it was done. But thank you for asking, just to make sure. Um, I will now instruct the town clerk to uh, submit one ballot in the name of Dune Hendricks for select board. Thank you very much for keeping an eye on me. Uh, number two, to elect a town clerk for a three-year term. Uh, open the floor for nominations. Yes, Nancy? I would nominate Julie Smith. Julie Smith has been nominated. You may have a second. second. Yes, Mason, seconded. Any further nominations? Be careful raising your hand there, Jerry. <laughs> Get yourself a job to go along. <laughs> uh, there being no further nominations, I'll entertain a motion to close nominations. So by Lori Borden, seconded. Lois Bond. Lois Bond, sorry. Lori's not Borden's with us. Been gone for some time. Thank you. Yeah. 61 year old brain, I do the best I can with it. I may have to hit it a couple times to keep it going. Um, seconded. Um, all in favor of closing nominations, signify by saying aye. Aye. All in favor of Julie Smith for town clerk for a three-year term, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. The clerk is instructed to submit one ballot in the name of Julie Smith. Uh, article number three, to elect a town treasurer for a three-year term. I'll open the floor for nominations. Yes, in the back. Nominate Julie Smith. Joe, Joy McDonald. Julie Smith is second on that nomination. Second, second Susie Smolin. Got it. Um, any further nominations? There being none, I'll mm -hmm. entertain a motion to close nominations. Yes, Kelly Kelly nominates, seconded. I need a second. Uh, yes, Sean. Right? Did I get that right? Shane. Close. I'm looking at Amy, that's why. Uh, all in favor of closing uh, nominations, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. All in favor of Julie Smith to be the town treasurer for a three year term, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Instructed to submit one ballot in the name of Julie Smith. Congratulations to Julie and to you. Now to elect a lister for a three-year term. And these can just be done in a voice vote. Martha. Um, I'd like to nominate Caroline Mayer to succeed herself. Caroline Mayer to succeed herself. <clears throat> Seconded in the back. Jess Arsenault. Jess Arsenault seconds it. Wonderful. Thank you. Any, any further nominations? Uh, there being none. All in favor of Jess Arsenault as being the lister for Caroline a few Mayer. Yeah. It's going to be a long night, folks. Bear with me. 
to elect in terms of Carolyn Mayer to be a lister for a three-year term, signified by saying I. I. I'll slow down a little bit. That's probably helps too. All opposed? The ayes have it. Carolyn Mayer is a lister. Article five, to elect a collector of delinquent taxes for a one-year term. Yes, I Kristen? Becky Klein. Becky Klein has been nominated. Is there a second? Second, Burr McCassidy seconds. Further nominations, and I'm putting my finger on the name. There being no other nominations, all in favor of Becky Klein being a collector of delinquent taxes for a one-year term, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Number six, to elect a, tribery, a library trustee for a five-year term. Open the floor for nominations. Yes. I'd like to. Pardon? Nominate. Burma. 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 It's Brenda. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Barbara Shenton, the incumbent, please. Barb Shenton has been nominated. Is there a second? Yes, Susie Smolin. Thank you. Further nominations? Being none. All in favor of Barb Shenton for being a library trustee, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it, Barb Shenton is a library trustee. Number seven, to elect another library trustee for the remaining one year balance of a five year term. Yes. I nominate Doreen Jones. Doreen Jones, Diane. My name's Doreen Jones, is there a second? Second. Second, Barb Shenton, are you seconding? Yeah, good, thank you. Keep those hands up, I might not see you right away. It's so dark up there. Um, further nominations? There being none, all in favor of Doreen Jones for a library trustee, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. And number eight, to elect a trustee of public funds for a three year term. Yes, Nancy. I nominate Sandy Pierce. Sandy Pierce has been nominated. And a second, Catherine Shankman. Thank you. Further nominations? Being none, all in favor of Sandy Pierce as a trustee of public funds, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, <coughs> say nay. The ayes have it, Sandy Pierce. Number nine, to elect a cemetery commissioner for a five-year term. Yes, in the back. Michelle Snobble has been nominated by Tom. Did you see that? Yeah. A second on that, please. Nancy Woolley, got it. Further nominations? Being none, Michelle, all in favor of Michelle Snobble, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. Ayes have it, Michelle Snobble. Congratulations to all the candidates. Thank you so much for serving. Article three, shall the voters authorize the treasurer to collect current taxes pursuant to 32 VSA 4791? I'll ask you to move the question and then someone to second. So Moved it by Barb Shenton, seconded by Burma. Any discussion on article three? Being none, I think we can safely move to a vote. All in favor of Article 3, shall the voters authorize the Treasury to collect current taxes pursuant to 32 VSA, signified by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Article 3 carries. Article 4, shall the voters authorize payment of real taxes in four installments, with due dates being Monday, August 15th, 2022, Monday, November 15th, 2022, Wednesday, February 15th, 2023, and Monday, May 15th, 2023, by physical delivery to the tax collector before 4 p.m. on those dates with postmarks not accepted as proof of delivery. Someone move that question to the floor. Kelly Kelly, seconded by Robert Mayer. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 4. Being none, I think we 
and go to a vote. All in favor of Article 4, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Article 4 carries. Okay, Article 5. So, I'm going to read the original as it was in the book. And there's a number that we probably need to amend according to the uh, recommendation of the select board. But I'll read the original because that's really how it should be done because that's the legal. Article 5, shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,397,011, of which $966,359 shall be raised by taxes. Let's move the article, second it, and then we have the discussion, we can amend it, okay? So if you move that article, Article 5, somebody move that for me? Yes, Lori, Bond. Lois. Lois. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows where I'm going to get tonight? I'm only going to get older. Start doing Hollywood names. Um, Robert Mayer, second. Okay. So I believe the select board has an amendment to propose here. All right. I would um, look at you. Amending lower the, um, the total expenditures to $1,295,000. $460 with the um, amount to be raised by taxes being $864,807. And the reason for the discrepancy between these two numbers is that um, because the last year when we um, did not have a physical meeting, we voted by Australian ballot and the way that the ballots were laid out, it fell in a different order than when we do this in person. So basically, the original number that we have is including all of the appropriations and articles, whereas if we voted for that and then we approved those articles, we would be double paying those, if that makes sense. So we basically had to back those numbers back out of the total, so then we come back and vote the specific articles. Any questions about that? I second. Oh, let's, we have to propose the amendment first. Um, I mean, I, mean I, I think you can propose an amendment. I think you can propose, yeah. I think they yeah. Yeah. proposed Fair enough. Amendment. Yeah. And you second it, Robert? That, that sounds good to me. So we have an amendment on the floor to change the numbers from uh, that shall be uh, general fund expenditures from 1397011 to 1295460 and the amount which will be raised by taxes from 966359 864807. Is there any discussion on the amendment? There being none, all in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The amendment carries. Now we need to pass the article, the new amended article. So if you read your sheet, that's really what we're doing now. Article 5 shall the voters authorize the total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,295,460 of which 864,807 should be raised by taxes. So moved. Oh, it's already moved. We just have to vote on it. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, so is this the appropriate um, place? Sorry, Katie, yeah, can we just wait for the mic? Especially with the heater on, it's a little hard for people to hear here. Yeah, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you. Uh, so and hold it, hold it close, Mason. Uh, I think, yeah. There you go. There you go. So, is this the location where we talk about the budgets in the in the program tonight? I mean, I'm kind of looking at the articles, and I wonder when do we break it down and talk about the yes the budget? I would say so. Is there anything else is specific? So yeah, this would be exactly the time. If you have questions, it's it's about this article. This is the budget that you're passing right now. So yeah, before we vote on it, absolutely, this is the discussion time. This is it. This yep. Is the, so raise so, your questions. Absolutely. Well, I did have one question. I was a little disappointed not to actually see a letter uh, by the public trust fund, uh, which we have been seeing. So basically, when I read the data sheet, all I could understand is that we spend 15000 on a Rhode Island banking firm to throw darts at a dartboard for our investments. And I'm just disappointed not to see a written report explaining which directions we're heading with different investments, especially after the climate initiative that we passed in 2020, 
it would be interesting to see our town officials how they relate to it. Thank you. Duke, can you speak to that as far as the investments? I, is there anyone here from the, um, the trustees of public funds that can speak to that? Yeah. Sandy? Yeah. Um, you want to run that mic back up to Sandy over there? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yep, all the way over. Our investment um, personnel are local. They are. They live in Vermont. They work for a bank, you know, an investment corporation. But we have tried to keep our business local. Sandy, can you bring it a little closer to your mouth? I'm just having a little trouble hearing you. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's much better. Thank our, you. Our, Oh, yeah, it's probably different uh, closer, yeah, up there. Yeah, our investment people are local. The bank they work for, or the investment company they work for, is not local. But they live locally. And they are trying to invest our money so we get as much out of it as we can to support the town. We are not very much in fossil fuels anymore. They have been trying to reduce our investment in fossil fuels. We have quite a lot of investment in um, solar and, you know, but I can't be absolutely sure with um, the percentage. Uh, I really don't know the percentage. We do not invest in guns and rifles and that kind. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. We we invest a lot of our money, uh, our town money, in banks because they seem to make us more money. Our goal is to make as much money as we can so we can give it to the town. Our secondary goal is to keep the money from devaluing because we're looking towards the future. We would like to have this money grow also so it's, it's useful for our citizens in the future. That's about what I can say. Does that answer your question, Mason? Uh, yes, I was curious why- Sandy, can you just hand the mic over, please, if he has a follow-up? Uh, I was just curious what happened with an actual written report this year. Has there been one in other in other years? Yes. Yeah. Yes, there has been one in other years, and our um, uh, the chairman of our board happens to be away, so I guess that's the reason there is no. And we will make sure we get one out to the town. Okay. Is that satisfactory, Mason? To um, get one. It helps. Yeah. Very good. Um, further question, Katie, right in the back. I can't see who it is, but uh, Cindy. Oh, Cindy. Yeah, there you go. A couple heads in front of you. So, um, with the report, I just was curious how much. You said the, the trust um, gives money to the school every year, and if they're not being the school, I was wondering where the money. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you, Cindy. I'm wondering how much there is being go. delegated this year from the trust to help the town, and if it's going towards school or it's going to something else this year. Um, that's what I'm curious about the report myself. Sandy, can you speak to that? Whoop, Katie, yep. You're gonna get your workout tonight. Whoop. Sandy, here's the mic here. I can I can speak to how much if you look on page twenty seven of the town report. Is, um, is that right? Well, I can say we have given twelve thousand dollars to the school district for school supplies this year. Twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. And Cindy, was that 
you wanted to know how much they contributed to the school or the town or both? She wanted all of it. All of it. So in the. Uh, if I, I, really, I don't have my notes here tonight. Here, I, I've got here, it right here. Here, but I don't have it. I think it's on page 27. On page 27? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on page 27. It's uh, 74000 I believe. Is that the amount of the fund or the amount of the gift? So that's the total fund amount. It doesn't. That's how much the fund contributed to the town. Oh, very good. Okay. And Amy, may I speak? Yeah. Um, Amy, Amy Wilt has been doing uh, quite a bit of extensive work on the trustees giving to the school, and we're actually, as a school board, still working on that right now to get all that cleared up and make sure. Um, they're actually usable. Some of these funds were dedicated toward high school and things like that, and we had to sort of reorganize that. But I believe there's going to be some gifts. It's a totally separate thing from the town, though. Yeah, that's really at the school board meeting we can give you that information. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Further discussion on the budget? Mason, one more? Yeah. Which is separate from the school board? Or uh, yes. What's going on? Yeah. So yes. we, we successfully did not invest in fossil fuels and we turn around and we're dumping it into fossil fuels over here. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. So I should I talk whole, to The whole concept of why we're even eating the building, why we're trying to save it, is what I mean. I mean, there's so much. 12,000. Well, well, 12,000. I, so the, the question relevant to the budget would be the amount of money that's being spent on the high school building in the budget. So I think that you so can speak in, to that. In the budget, um, nothing. Is that the $12,000 that the trustees of public fund chose to give to help um, for the heating of the high school, well, we're all enjoying it right now that we're inside because it's freaking cold outside. But it's it basically to, in the process of trying to decide what's going to happen with this building. We have to protect the building and not let it just freeze up, because then that would just decrease the value dramatically. Catherine, you want to speak to that? Yeah. Hello. We ask that the, you know, Mason, I hope you know, that uh, we're currently conducting a feasibility study on repurposing the high school. And in order for the building to be accessible to the consultants, um, there was a contingency or a condition uh, by the school district that Rochester pay an additional $15,000 towards heating the building this year in order to keep the doors open. There were three different representatives at a school board meeting that I went to that basically said, if you shutter the building, turn off the heat, turn off the electricity, you will not have a building because it's on a slab. And so the idea, while a feasibility study is being conducted to be able to give the voters the information that the select board would like them to have in order to vote, being an informed vote, we agreed to the $15,000 and, and the trustees helped. And, and, um, and another point on that. That is money that is we spent this year. That's not money that is included in the budget that we're voting on right now. This budget we're voting on right now um, comes into play um, July 1st. Further discussion on the budget at this time? If not, I'll entertain a motion to call the question. So, yes, so by Burma, seconded by Robert. And all in favor, call the question, get to the vote. Say you're fine by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. So again, I'll read this out with the new numbers. Article 5, shall the voters authorize total highway and general fund expenditures of $1,295,460, of which $864,807 shall be raised by taxes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. 
The ayes have it. Article 5 passes. Article 6. Shall the voters exempt real property in Rochester Village owned by Rochester Community Care Home, Inc., DBA, Park House, a nonprofit tax exempt organization providing services and housing for low income and other elderly persons from property taxes for five years, FY 23 to FY 27, pursuant to 32 VSA 3840. Move that question. Joanne moved it. A second, please. Kelly Kelly, thank you. Any discussion on this article? Joanne. Oops, we hold up, just wait for that. Katie's quick. No matter how you vote tonight, thank you, everybody in this town, for voting this for so many years. It is extremely helpful in keeping our budget where it needs to be, or where we hope it will be. So, thank you. Further discussion on this article? Ethan? Yes. As, as a point of information, yeah. Can you wait for I'm not trying to influence anybody's vote, but uh, what is the tax? What would be the taxable value of that building? Is uh, Joanne? Do you know? Is Frank? I don't think it's been. It hasn't been taxed in quite a long time, so I don't know that anybody knows that. Wait, Nancy. Yeah. The way it would be. It has a list of value, and I'm not even going to hazard it. Yeah. So I, I'm sure we can find out for you, but I don't think we have that tonight. Well, if I can include my vote, I'm just curious. Yeah. Further discussion on this article? Being none, I believe we can move to the vote. Uh, exempt property tax for the park house. Article 6, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Article 6 passes. Article 7, shall the voters appropriate $48,314, 48, sorry, $48,314 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library. So I move that question for me, please, for McCassidy, seconded by Susie. Thank you. Any discussion on this article? Yes, in the back, Becky Klein. More uh, first of all, I'd like More to buttons. express my thoughts that we have a lovely library. Mm -hmm. um, it's always available. The books I've ever, ever wanted are available. Upstairs is a lovely um, museum, which is a lot of fun to visit. And um, my comments um, are not to be offensive. I think the trustees are great people. They spend a lot of time um, uh, working for us in that library. But um, I would like to suggest that, it, and I don't know, can we? Can this $48,000 be amended? I believe from the floor, yeah. No. Much like the board, uh, the budget finance committee every year, they look at the uh, fund balance after they, um, after week, after week, after week, they go over the general town budget. Uh, line by line, knocking out $50 here, $100 there, $500 peanuts, but when it adds up, uh, all they're doing is looking to keep the uh, amount to be raised by taxes. And so I'm thinking that, and I'm not an accountant, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that because the library has uh, shown a uh, balance in their checkbook uh, back in 2019 of uh, unrestricted funds, which to me says that it's money that doesn't belong in the annual campaign or in the window um, fund or any of that. It's unrestricted money. And so 2019, there was over $8,000 of unrestricted money left over at the end of the fiscal year. 
in 2020, there was uh, over 10,000 doctors left in the Army Street courts at the end of the year. 2020, there was 8,900 dollars left in unrestricted funds at the end of the year. I noticed in the, in the budget report, in the town report, that for um, uh, this current budget we're in, the uh, trustees allotted $4,600 to offset the money that uh, they would buy us in town. In the Sorry, what was the last part? I didn't hear that. To offset, yeah. offset the money that they would pass the town for. Um, and then um, in this 2022-23 budget, is that what they're what we're working on now? Or, yes. Yeah. They're only asking $1,200 to offset. Um, I also noticed uh, one other uh, thing. The Trustees have two investment funds, the Kirkpatrick and the Wing Fund. The Wing Fund is restricted to, I think, folks who are correctly in my office. And the Kirkpatrick Fund is unrestricted money. Uh, in um, 2020, they didn't use any of the funds that they could have drawn out. They draw out funds, it's a moving average. Um, so they they had scheduled to take out, I think for the past two years, it's been like $3,326 out of the Kirkpatrick unrestricted fund. And uh, they, in 2020, they didn't take it out. In 2021, they used only half of those restricted funds, uh, unrestricted funds. In FY20, um, they budgeted, uh, at FY22, the, uh, uh, what we're in the fiscal year we're in now, that we're spending in now, uh, they budgeted, you know, the allotted amount. They have, haven't used any of it yet, we're, uh, according to uh, the town report. I don't know, or maybe we could say, have you taken any of that money yet from Kirkpatrick? Uh, no. Not yet. Have, we've got three months to go, and they haven't taken any of that money out. I think we could safely say, I mean, I personally would like to see 5000 taken off this $48,000. I think we could safely say we could lower this request by $4,000. So, um, so you meant, how you would do this is to propose an amendment? Yes. Which would be to lower the number to 44,314? Yes. And then you would need to have a second, and then we would have discussion on that amendment. Okay. And then it, we would vote on the amendment, and if it passes, then that would be the new number. If it doesn't pass, then we would go back to the original number of 48,000. Okay. Okay? Um, uh, I'll take that as a, a, an amendment that show the voters appropriate, which, so the number could change to 44,000. 314,000, is there a second to this amendment? Yes, Lois Bonner, second. Um, discussion on the amendment. Yep, we got right over here, Susie. I, yep, I, I, I brought my own microphone. Can you all hear me? Uh, Hold on. Can you all hear me? No, I can't use a regular mic. Can you all hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, since Becky mentioned it, uh, I would just like to make an inquiry. It's been, uh, um, or no, no, Becky, excuse me, that uh, I, I too value the library tremendously. Uh, but you made reference to the museum upstairs. It's my understanding that that museum is being downsized and that the Historical Society needs a new location. Um, if this is not correct, please correct me. Anyone from the library? And if this is the f this, if this is indeed what's happening, we also need to consider as a town having a new location for our historical society. I think it's an important piece of the town going forward. 
So is there anyone from the library that can comment on that? It's not being downsized. I don't know where that information came from. Who, who's speaking, sorry? Kelly? Kelly? <laughs> no, it's my understanding that, I, I'm not un, under the impression that it's being downsized. We, that hasn't been anything I've heard in any discussions. This actually is, is more germane, if I may, to the, to the full article as opposed to the amendment. Right now we're discussing the specific okay. amendment. And so we can, I don't want to cut you off, Susie, but I just want to let our comments to be specific to the dollar change of a $4,000 reduction in the budget. So um, we have uh, next year. Some of you may not know who I am, but I've been paying taxes here for 55 years. So I held a price me almost as an expert. Um, they also may know that I'm loath to spend money. In, in the case of Rochester public buildings, they are under, undergoing an aging process, as I am. And I, I would say that it's very important to have reserve funds available for emergencies that happen in these buildings. And we're not talking about a gigantic amount of money that's going to reduce anybody's taxes by an appreciable amount. So I am totally against moving $5,000 out. Oh, $4,000. $4,000. Okay. Very good. Thank you all. Um, then we have up in the back, Sydney Sutherland on the left here. Katie, thank you so much. And then we'll go to Barb, I believe. Cindy first. Yeah, Cindy first. All in the back. Sorry. Thank you. And then I'll get to you. Cindy. Um, I was wondering if anybody from the library could speak about the money, but I haven't been a homeowner. I know that you know, disasters happen and things happen. And I only had a seven thousand in my savings. I'm not going to be very, you know, scared. This is a major building. Can you the library the most important thing in the town? Extra building. Um, so um, I, I have been like, also opposed to taking the entire budget. Good. Then down. Are you? Did you want to speak? Yeah. Oh, oh no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I'm not just sorry, Jeff. Jeff is next. In this past year, we have uh, had an audit done of town buildings, and uh, uh, from the standpoint of trying to save energy in our, our community problems, um, we can't get to that library yet because the library is taking on a lot. Uh, we are we are seeing sills on the north side of the building rotting out. Uh, we have very unconventional uh, lower cladding on the building, um, and uh, I think we're going to be seeing expenditures well above what uh, we're talking about moving here just to stabilize and save that building. Uh, back to Becky. Uh, I'm going to say that this budget is an operating budget. I don't think that um, I don't think that um, the, the school, the library, is asking for money to uh, uh, build a campaign uh, fund. Although I do know that there's thirty-six thousand dollars sitting right now in an annual campaign fund. Uh, I don't know if, if that is earmarked for the building. Um, I don't know that, but this is, I think, mostly an operating budget. Further discussion on the amendment on the floor. Yes, in the back, but Yeah, Katie, that's a good way to go. Good work. What meant me, global civilian. Um, as far as operations are concerned, the past two years have been less than usual, so I would be reluctant to base this next coming year on numbers cited from 2019, 2020, 2020 to 21, just because it's been so unusual. There's a discussion on the amendment. If not, I believe we're ready to move the question. Uh, the amendment, oh, Andrea, did you, oh, no. oh, you're waiting. <laughs> Be careful, my eyes like a hawk. My brain isn't, but my eye is. Um, uh, so we have an amendment on the floor. Um, that is, shall the voters appropriate 
and change the amount to 44,314 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library. All in favor signify by saying aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. Nay. Okay. The article is defeated. We are back to the article as is written. Um, are there sort of further discussion? Mason? Hold on a sec. Please wait for the mic. I know it's technology, but it's useful. Okay. I move to amend Article 7. Shall the voters appropriate 50000 for operating and structural expenses of the Rochester Public Library? There has been an amendment to amend the amount to 50000 even. Is there a second for this amendment? I see, oh, Vernon Cassidy has seconded the amendment. We have an amendment on the floor to amend the amount to 50,000 even for the library operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library. Is there any discussion? Yeah, also includes Well, I can't change the wording. All we can do is change numbers. We can't change the wording, so they get to spend. What? No, it's illegal. It's illegal to change the wording of a, of a, of a warning. Yeah, you can only change numbers up or down. So you're calling a warning an article. It's a warning article. A warn article cannot be changed. The language cannot be changed. We can't redirect money to go someplace else. All you can do is change the number up or down. Barb Shenton, would you like to speak to this? Thank you for uh, re-voting me in as a library trustee. I just want to make sure that everybody knows the fact that the town has the building. The town has a building reserve fund. So voting that money into the library's budget wouldn't necessarily be going to pay for those the structural stuff. So I, I think there, there might be another article that will deal with that, but not for operating expenses. Okay, for the discussion on this amendment to raise the amount to 50,000. Any further discussion? Okay, none. All in favor of raising the um, uh, amount of the library budget to $50,000 signify by saying aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. Nay. Yes, have it. We're back to Article nay's 7. Out, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, yeah, nay's nay's out. Thank you. Get used to that. It's, all right, we are back to the original article. Further, just have to check. Any more discussion on this? Robert, call the question. Oh, we'll, we'll be loose enough to let that happen. Um, shall the voters appropriate 48314 towards operating expenses of the Rochester Public Library? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. Article 7 passes. As written. Article 8. Shall the voters appropriate $20,400 to continue funding the Fast Trash and Recycling Program from July 1, 2022 through June 30th, 2023? Moved by Amy, seconded by Kelly Kelly. Thank you. Any discussion on this? Yes, in the back, Joanne Donald. I just have a question. I have not had a chance to actually look for it in the budget. But do Hancock and Granville chip in anything towards this? Just out of curiosity. They, they do not. They pay separately for it. But they. So I guess in a way they chip in because they, there is a, an expense on their books, but they don't okay. get money to the town of Rochester. But they don't bring it to us. For the discussion on Article 8, being none, all in favor of Article 8, uh, 20,400 for fast trash, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. Article 8 passes. Article 9. So the voters authorize the select board to borrow an amount not to exceed $105,080 for the purchase of a Western Star tandem truck for the highway department. So moved by somebody. Moved by Cassidy, seconded by Robert Mayer. Thank you. Discussion on Article 9. 
Very simple. Hold on a sec. Sure. borrow? Yeah. Can you ask your question again, please? Are defining borrow and if that's the amount, what's the interest? Um, so go to page 28 and give you details on that. One, two. The interest on that is. $188. Which, which line is this? So we know what we're looking at. It's $188 a year. What percentage is that? It's not locked in. It's yet. not been locked. But it's, it's, it's pretty low. Municipal rates, we have access to. to uh, <laughs> But it's around 2.9 right now. Julie's saying 2.8, 2.9, 2.9 percent interest on the loan, but it's not totally locked in yet. But not we're waiting in. until we have the approval to borrow it to actually sign the papers. So I can't tell you exactly what it is. No, no, this is figured in already. What? Frank, you want to speak to that? This and this amount is already figured in the 864,000. Eight hundred and seven dollars that we voted for to be raised by taxes. Further questions on Article Nine? Oh, Mason, once again, yeah. If it hasn't been approved yet, is it? How, it hasn't been approved yet, so how could it be an article? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. We're being asked on something that's not approved. Yeah. No, we're asking you to be approved, approve this article. No, no, no. The process, the town has not been approved for this far in mind. Is yes. that correct, Jim? Is that what you just said? All right. We're asking you to approve us. We're asking you so, for permission. But we have to approval to borrow the money. We have already done that. From a bank, we, uh, we have yeah, we have looked at it. We have not signed the papers yet because we're asking you for the approval. That's that's, that's yeah. Further questions on Article Nine? Okay, I think we're ready. So the voters authorize select board to borrow an amount not to exceed one hundred five thousand eighty dollars for the purchase of a Western Star tandem truck for the highway department. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. Article 9 passes. Article 10. Should the voters authorize the select board to borrow an amount not to exceed $65,165 for the purchase of a Ford F550 4x4 crew cab truck for the fire department? Somebody move this article for me. Yes, Robert. And seconded by Burma. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 10? Okay, none. All in favor of Article 10, 65,165 for an F550, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Article 10 passes. Article 11, should the voters appropriate $9,000 to continue funding the town buildings and property reserve fund? It's your pleasure. Kelly Kelly moving it, Robert Mayer second. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 11? Be none. All in favor of appropriating $9,000 to continue funding the town buildings and property reserve funds signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Article 11 passes. Article 12. So the voters appropriate $1,000 to continue funding the tennis reserve fund for an ongoing and future court maintenance. For ongoing and future court maintenance. What's your pleasure? Moved by Robert Mayer, seconded by Susie Smolin. Questions? Yes, Mason. Uh, oh, 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 wait your turn, wait your turn. The tenants reserve fund, it's a town fund because the rec department, Rochester Rec Department report doesn't talk about the tenants report. 
last page. I mean, how do, how do we do that? Page 92, the Rochester Recreation Department. So the Tennis Reserve is a separate organization. How, did, how does this all work? And how did it get warranted? Does anybody know the history of that? So, so I guess the difference why that's not in, included in the, the funds for the Recreation Committee, the Recreation Department, is that that's more for funding, you know, specific activities and staffing for people to run programs for kids. The, the tennis court itself is a physical, you know, um, town property. Okay, it's a physical town property that requires specific upkeep. You know, so it's it's been separated out, you know, because it's 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 a particular specific item. Uh, on page 22 is that the right reserve fund. The reserve fund. Um, yeah. So basically, we need to save up money for known um, um, resurfacing and larger expenses. Whereas the recreation committee is is that expenses is funding activities. You know, not a, a physical thing that needs uh, maintenance. Maybe one more time. That's okay. Um, so the tennis courts are in the floodplain. Is there any way that we can start looking to move the tennis courts to higher ground so that the maintenance won't be as much in the future? <laughs> I don't think that's really a um, really a practical way to, to think about the expense of moving them and finding another spot to put them is, is um, going to be way more than what we're talking about here for periodic resurfacing. It's, it's one thing that's in the floodplain that, that was allowed because it's not, it does not stick up above the ground level. It does not impede the, the floodway. You know, it may take out the fence and, and there was damage done to it during Irene course, but that was actually um, taken care of by the FEMA funds that took care of that, I believe. So it's, yeah, in terms of your suggestion to, to move it, um, I don't know where we'd move it to and where we'd get the money to do that. So. Further questions in Article 12? Being none, all in favor of appropriating $1,000 to continue finding a tennis reserve fund? Signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. Article 12 passes. Article 13. All right, we have a list here. Should the voters vote appropriate? Should the voters vote to appropriate the following sums as requested by these community agencies? Central Vermont Council on Aging, $3,000. Claire Martin Center, $2,066. Green Up Vermont, $100. Orange County Parent Child Center, $250. Quinn Town Senior Center, $9,849. Safe Line Inc., $250. Tri Valley Transport, formerly Stagecoach, $1,300. Vermont Rural Fire Hydrant, $100. VNH Visiting Nurse Association, $4,800. White River Partnership, $875. Women Safe, $250 for a total of $22,840. What's your pleasure on this article? Somebody move it for me, Robert moves. Seconded, Amy, thank you. Any discussion on this article? Being none, I won't read the totals again. I'll just read the total. That's okay with you. Article 13. Um, all these appropriate the following sums for a total of $22,840. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. You guys have it? Article 13 passes. And then Article 14, to transact any other legal and proper business to be brought before said meeting. And I believe. Uh, there is a report. Is that it, Catherine? 
Would you like to speak at this time? And then I'll, I'll get to, I saw your hand in Mason. Hi, I'm, I'm Vic Roboto, and Catherine Schenk and I here. We are co-chairs of the committee that's working on a uh, plan to repurpose this building. And I want to give you an update on where we are with this project right now and what's coming up this summer. Uh, in the back of your town report booklet is a two-page summary that gives a uh, brief uh, overview of the project history and scope and uh, some of the costs involved. And, and I'm not going to repeat what's there, but I'd be happy to answer specific questions from that. Um, I want to uh, just provide a couple of comments and then just open up to any questions anybody might have. Uh, first of all, the, the model that we're working on is to enable this building with new tenants to be self-sustaining over time. That is, the rental income uh, would pay for the expenses to operate the building on a big, big uh, annual basis. Uh, and having said that, though, there is have to be a period of time when it's going to need support between when uh, new tenants are identified and can actually come in and occupy the building. Get into more of that in a bit. Yeah, there's a, there's a significant amount of work that needs to be done to this building uh, to make it sustainable over time. It's the heating system, the electrical panel, um, window replacement, just a wide variety of heat improvement, uh, different sources of energy than what's being used today. So there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, the consulting architects that have been retained through the grant that we received estimated it's $2 million or, or more, depending on the final scope of uh, what the building is going to be used for. So there's a lot of work to be done. It's going to take time. And, and potentially, there's our, there are grant funds available to support that. So our, our intention is to identify tenants who would make a provisional commitment to come to this building, contingent on the building being upgraded, getting the grants to come in, et cetera, and make it feasible for a tenant to occupy the building. Now we have put in the plan that you see in the back of the booklet a number of programs that um, are potential to come to this building, the adult uh, day program, uh, child care, a number of other things. and that, program plan is still evolved. In fact, just today, I learned about uh, two additional uh, uh, potential sponsors for this building uh, who are very interested in coming into this building. Uh, so it's, as I say, it's an evolving process. We're not there yet, but there is a deadline coming up. So uh, this summer, uh, there will be a warned town meeting to hear the output of this committee's work what recommendation is being made and uh, put it to a town vote of whether to acquire the building and uh, take responsibility for it. I would also say that, there's one, one final thing, and I'll have the questions. Now, there, there's a number of alternate possible scenarios for this building. One is, you know, best of all possible worlds, we, we find tenants or even a buyer for the building, take it over, take responsibility for it. Another is that uh, the building is uh, just left as it is. The school board uh, you know, owns the building, but really has no use for it, and really can't afford to put money into this building. And uh, so, and they have you know the elementary school to take care of as well. So, it uh, you know if if nobody else takes responsibility for the building, it'll just be boarded up, put a fence around it, and it'll sit here indefinitely as an empty building. Uh, another option is that it would be demolished, but that's pretty expensive. Uh, the uh, one study was done that uh, assessed it would take $770,000 to demolish the building. And uh, you know, where's that money going to come from? So we're trying to work towards a future for this building where it, it continues to be an asset for the town, that it pays its own way, and it's something that everybody could be proud of. It's, uh, you know, it's not a sure thing by any stretch, but that's the goal we're working for. So let me stop there and get to Catherine. So we're talking right now to a number of people, um, and we can't at this point because 
it's not it's just not the appropriate time to announce who they are, but there's some significant tenants who have expressed serious interest in being part of the building. And the issue that we have in terms of the conditional commitment is that the town doesn't own the building right now. So we can't literally make any contracts or anything like that. We can just do conditional commitments. If the town, when we get the results of the full feasibility study uh, later in June, and the town decides to go acquire it, uh, we can go forward with that, as well as starting to draw down the funds. Federal funds are available right now, and we need to present uh, a full proposal with reliable tenants. Now, I want to just say um, that in our proposal, we have we have some components that, at this point, basically the arts that can't really sustain that portion of the building. We still want the arts in the building, but we have to balance that with with um, tenants that actually can pay their way. Uh, we have wonderful long-term established arts programming here, and their budgets basically keep their programs going. And they have never had to pay for this building. As a matter of fact, we paid for this building as a part of our school budget, so certainly we paid for it with our taxes. But we've never had to really take on paying for this building separate from the school. And the consultants have estimated right now that it would cost about 97000 a year to sustain the building, um, which Julie and I went over these numbers this week, and I hope this is accurate, but that would break down to $9.71 per $100,000 of value of, the, of your property. So you can take that number and see how it would impact you very directly. Uh, and that could be the scenario for that year that we're trying to upgrade buildings. Catherine, I'm worried you, about drawing down the funds. Catherine, you keep in mind different. Not drawing, I'm worried about drawing down the funds because I do believe that we're, we'll be a very good candidate for especially the federal funds. But I'm not going to stand here and say it's not going to cost you money to sustain the building either in that interim until we can get tenants in place. So um, it's been an honor to do the work, it's been a lot of work. I mean, I work full-time jobs, so this is like weekends and, you know, my days off to, you know, work with creating surveys and, you know, then tallying the numbers. Lolly's here too, did you want to say anything, Lolly? No. Anyway, um, we're open to questions. Um, let's go to Mason and then we'll go to... Mason? Mason, wait for the mic there. Okay, you've spoken about federal grants, but I'm concerned about the floodplain. Once again, I mentioned the floodplain issue. We were fortunate, and I agree, that uh, it only dumped the water, it wasn't the wind. We started piling wind and logs, and we easily could see the water level rise higher than this auditorium getting flooded. What's the cost of the insurance for a renovation? What's what, what part of that have you discussed in the sustainability related to climate change? You know, it, right now the building belongs to the supervisory union. You know, it's like that term. It technically belongs to the district. Just a, a couple of comments in, in that regard. Um, the consulting architects we're working with uh, tell us that there are ways to mitigate the risk of floods, and so only a portion of the building is actually within the 100-year floodplain. Secondly, these architects, it's GBA Associates of Montpelier, they've been hired by, um, what's the, uh, the, uh, Jeff, Jeff's here, he should be able to. Yeah, what's the energy consulting service in Vermont? That, that energy, um, efficiency Vermont. Efficiency. Yeah, so this, this firm has been hired by Efficiency Vermont to design their building. Uh, this is a company, an architectural firm that's very aware of energy conservation, and it's part of their mission of their organization. So, you know, if this goes forward, and this architect presents a plan for us, uh, I, I'm pretty confident that We'll get as good advice on that front as you can get. Up to Cindy. Right? Cindy. So I just want to say, we, we, we 
Yes, we have a consultant architect. We also have Dick Robson, architect, who's been part of our um, committee since the get-go. And the reason that flood mitigation didn't happen when the post-Irene repair was going on, Mason, is because the insurance company would not pay for flood mitigation of this building. But it is a doable thing. We're told that by more than one professional. Cindy, Cindy in the back. Um, so I have a question. Um, have you put any thought to in moving the town offices to the building, this building here, and then selling the town office as maybe maybe condos there to help subsidize the cost? I love what everything you're doing. I think we should hold on to it and even using the, our, our, our Rochester Trust to help pay for it. Because I think we're growing. And I think it would be. I love the idea. Yeah, that, that idea has been tossed around, but we haven't had a serious conversation about it yet, and I very much liked it because I think there's a good possibility that good things could come out of that for the reasons you described. So then we'd have to get engaged with the select board and and uh, they would commission a subcommittee to look at this. Or, yeah. But you know, the study that Jeff uh, mentioned about the town buildings having been assessed identified that the, the uh, town office building uh, is you know, right for doing something else with it or, or putting a lot of money into it. So I think this is the time to really face up to that question as well. And it, this might be a, a reasonable solution to move that function here to something else with that property. That, that property, the, the, where the town office currently is, is a better property for putting okay. housing, for sure. This building is on a slab. Yes, in the back there. And please identify, I, I just uh, can't see from here. Di Diane Tiesel, uh, hearing about uh, Burlington High School and the PCBs. I'm wondering if any of the consultants looked at PCBs, asbestos, or lead paint in the building? Um, asbestos was looked at by the uh, collector associates some work had been done on mitigation. I'm not sure if that work is complete yet. I don't know about PCBs. That's typically in the balance with fluorescent lights and talking around windows and other places. Uh, we have not pursued uh, uh, investigation of that, but that would have to be done as well for the reason you described. And lead paint, I don't know. This building was built in 74, so it could have included lead paint in its construction somewhere along the line. Katie, down here, the drum. Um, I'm Rob Gardner, and uh, first of all, I want to thank you and Catherine and the committee for all the work you've done uh, on a tremendously complicated subject. This is a deeply complicated subject. Uh, there's a particularly wise man in town here, one of the elders uh, of the town, who said to me, the decision to buy this high school is going to be the most important financial decision the town makes in decades. It's a huge, complicated decision. So what I want to say to you guys, my message to you is about public information. My sense, and I love you guys, you know I love you guys, Pick the you, Kevin. I love you guys. <laughs> but my sense and most of the information that's been coming to me is a lot of good news, exciting programs, how good this would be for the town, all true. But what I'm not hearing about is the bad news. There's a lot of bad news about this. Uh, there's a, a list of every single problem the building has that adds up to the $2 million. I know you have this because I gave it to you. But I've never seen that list come back out. And if I were going to spend that kind of money, I'd want to know as many details as possible. I'm not accusing you guys of anything. I look at this. I think it was, from a public information standpoint, a big mistake to pay $15,000 to the school board to pay for the heating here, a decision I think is correct. But to do that without public discussion, and I was in the select board meeting when that was discussed, I mean, it was passed. That was a mistake. It wasn't because there's anything wrong with the decision or anything wrong with Doom. But if there wasn't a consciousness there of transparency and sharing information with the town, because you guys are going to have to vote on this. And this is a difficult, extremely complicated subject. So I don't take up any more time. I'm just I'm asking you to try to keep keep the bad news in the in the package too thank you thanks Robin. point well taken um, 
just uh, for everybody's awareness, on the town website now sits this uh, Black River study that lists up in great detail um, all the uh, problems with the building. That uh, this is a study of the school board commissioned several years ago. So it's, it's 2018. Um, 2018. Uh, so it's it's there, and and we'll you know we'll try to do better. Can I can I respond? To that? <laughs> so look, you can go to look at this report. It's impenetrable. It is very difficult to read. It's hard for uh, uh, engineers to read. So I went through that report and another engineering report having to do with uh, energy costs for town buildings. And I pulled out what I thought was relevant uh, information point by point. Uh, that's not hard to read. And, and you all have that. And you might want to make it available to people. I'm not trying to blow my own horn. But that's the kind of detail I think. If you just say to everybody, we'll go to the town office and, and go through this impenetrable stuff, they're not going to go through it. You have to give people information that they can understand and, and uh, take ownership of and understand how big a decision we're making here. That's all. Fair enough. I think it was Jeff tonight who said that there was an evaluation of all the town owned buildings. And there's a, like a million dollar price tag on the town office, a million dollar price tag on the library, and we're getting a two million dollar price tag on this 33,000 square foot building, which could conceivably pull in the functions of our administrative functions of our town, as well as provide community space. Rob's, Rob's absolutely right. I mean, you know, you don't get any, something for nothing. When the, when the full report in all of its detail is revealed to the town, expecting June, right? Somewhere around in there, this town will make a decision. And it's only been our job, really, to try to get that information to you. I have been encouraged at recent times in that it looks like we do have people who are very serious about moving in, paying, the, the consultant has put out a square footage and cost for rental sheet on that, so there's no surprises there either. Um, but, you know, when this building was built in 1974, so its energy system was relative to then. If you came into the basement of my house, like CB Oil does, you'd have to bow down to my old burner. It's still working, but it's an antique, and so this is even more contemporary than that. It works, we're warm, but like Mason likes to say, we need to be more conscious about our oil consumption, and this is based on oil. So we're hoping that in an upgrade phase, we will be moving towards a uh, more contemporary energy system for this building that will take us you know, further into the next 50, 100 years. We have further questions for Beck and Catherine. Is there further business? Thank you, Raleigh. Oh, one more. Hello. Yeah, not a question, but just the website to say to you guys. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get it uh, completely finished for this date, but we are working hard on the website that would include all of the documentation and um, progress that we've made as a committee on this project. So um, you can look for an announcement in that for that. I hope in the next week we'll have it pretty well finalized and ready to share with everyone. And uh, on that website, uh, we'll post a summarized, easy to read version of <laughs> what Rob, Rob had uh, alluded to. So uh, we'll, we'll, do our, we'll do a better job uh, about uh, getting the information out, make it digestible and understandable. And uh, that'll be coming soon. To end this on a positive note, even in the Black River um, study, it said that this building was in good shape compared to other buildings of the same era. And the two architects have been working uh, in the consulting phase have said it has excellent bones. When we last heard this building on March 11 with uh, Greg Dawson's, um, he showed us how we can pull natural light into the library. Uh, he showed us the beautiful wood floor that's above the hang ceilings. I mean, he has a vision of really transforming some of the more sort of unaesthetic <coughs> qualities of the building into something that will be quite lovely. So that'll be all part of what we learn and see when they give their total report. 
with visuals. Thank you. For the business to transact, to be brought before said meeting, I've uh, got Mason first, and then Jeff. Go first. Go, go. Oh, Martha. Martha's signaling Oh, sorry. I'm Martha. Sorry, I didn't see you then. We'll get out to Jeff. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. I just would like to encourage people uh, to uh, get a copy of the Rochester Area Climate Initiative report uh, and to consider uh, participating in one of the three task forces that will be following up and to implement community. Uh, identified and rated priority. We have an affordable housing task force and the task will be coordinating that. We have a farm hub, uh, Kevin Doherty and uh, Matt Isaacson who worked on that and the Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee who working on energy related items of uh, our own as well as those that overlap with the affordable housing. Um, so again, I encourage you to pick up that report and we get involved and uh, help move this in Thank you. Yeah, uh, sorry, Martha, and then Mason. Uh, well, I was going to make a motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. <laughs> We've got it. Okay. <laughs> it's, fair, it's fair to give a fair here. Everybody, that's, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is some urgent business. Sorry, I can't uh, answer. There, there's some very urgent business. It's town related, and it's international. And um, I'd like to make a motion. So we can't, voters, we can't this, add any motions. This is a town meeting. No, you can't add a motion to the warning. This is business. You can talk. It's questions, but you can't add anything that's binding to the to the a warning. That's why there's a warning so that everybody knows what's coming. It has to be out a certain amount of time beforehand. I'm not trying to shut you right. down. That's just the way it works. This is just an urgent situation. Okay. Well, you can I mean, the fact that we're even here tonight with democracy is quiet, so I would have liked to make a motion to appropriate $1,000 to the organization Save the Children for the purpose of the Ukrainian war to meet mm -hmm. efforts as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I think as a collective group of people sitting here with democracy, that this is our duty and an opportunity to talk about it and make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Now can I make a motion to adjourn? I believe so. There being no other business to bring before, I'll alter one last. Just one more comment, uh, since I never can keep quiet. Um, I happen to live just off Burke Street, and I would like to do a shout out for the town road crew oh. for the great job they've done. Yeah. The last. Thank you. I would like to give a shout out to our mic runner tonight. He's done a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No further business to bring before the committee. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Please. Motion to adjourn, seconded by Susie Smolin. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Good night. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you.